Hey, welcome back to Wrench Wench Works. I'm Jenny, and I'm so glad you came back. Today, we're going to talk about draw bars. But in order to talk about draw bars, we also have to touch a bit on spindles, or as I call them, the spindly bits. So in order for you to understand how the draw bar functions with the spindle, why don't we climb atop old Oli here and take a peek on what's going on under the covers. Oli spindle door is open. A couple things I want you to take note of here. So you're going to notice there's like another little limit switch up here. That's the enclosure door switch. So when the door is closed, it connects so that the spindle doesn't automatically or accidentally turn on when you have it open. You'll probably notice I have a plate here as well. And that is because I actually bent my door a while back and I was being lazy. So it doesn't always connect. So when the spindle's moving, sometimes it'll actually shake it so the door's loose and it'll break connection and the spindle will turn off. So good troubleshooting hint for some of you that might say, why is my spindle intermittently turning on and off? Always go ahead and double check and verify that you have a good connection between the door and that switch there. Um, other thing you might notice is this large monstrosity in the front here. That's the pneumatic draw bar. Um, today we're going to talk about standard draw bars, so I'm just going to briefly touch on how this works, and we can get into it deeper in another episode. But you'll see there's um, a stack up of three little um, plates here. Inside those plates is a piston. Actually, there's a couple pistons, and when the air goes through there, the piston goes up and down. The pistons also have an O-ring around them. It's very important to have good clean air with maybe an FRL, filter, regulator, lubricator in there that just kind of condition the seals so they don't dry out, roll over, and crack on you. And that's kind of the whole purpose of having an FRL. Um, other thing that I want you to take note of is that it's got this almost like arbor down here, this big giant nut. So when the, when the, um, power draw bar actuates, that nut comes down, hits the top of the draw bar, and compresses it and pushes the tool out. So that's a very oversimplified explanation, but we'll get into that perhaps in a future video. For now, what I want to do is get her out of the way so we can take a look at the actual spindle and belt and the spindle motor. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab a tray. And there's not much hardware here to remove the power draw bar. It's um, one shoulder bolt. And we got her cracked loose here. So it's a shoulder bolt and a little linch pin. And all I'm going to do is pull the linch pin, pull the shoulder bolt. And um, we're just going to swing it right out of the way. We're not even going to disconnect the air fittings right now because there's no need for it. But Let's get a little closer, and I want to show you how a spindle works. All right, with that big old power draw bar out of the way, now we can kind of see what's going on here. So if you look at this part right here, that's the actual spindle motor. And the spindle motor, for people who are not familiar, is actually what turns the spindle. Now, it does that via pulley system. If you take a gander underneath the spindle motor itself, you'll see there's two pulleys. Um, on the spindle motor, and you'll notice that the spindle also has two pulleys. So the reason there's two pulleys is because um, this particular machine has a high belt range and a low belt range. So right now, this top pulley position only is sitting in the high belt range. But if I wanted to go ahead and throw him in low gear because I needed a bit more torque or for some other reason, which I hardly ever run in low gear, to be honest, because he's just such a little guy. But what we could do is crack loose these 10 millimeter socket head cap screws that are on the spindle uh, motor plate. And you'll notice this plate is slotted. So what we do is crack it loose and tip it or slide it forward, which would add some slack to this uh, pulley belt here and allow us to take this belt and move it down to that low belt range. Now, you'll see this part here, this is the actual draw bar, the guy that we're going to be talking about today, but mine looks a little different. If you have a manual draw bar, so no pneumatic tool release, no power draw bar, 
you will not have these uh, Bellevue or spring washers. So these washers are actually here to put tension um, on the collet and the power drawbar um, system or the drawbar so that we're going to actually be releasing it by pushing down with the pneumatic drawbar in my in Oli's case here. But with the manual drawbar, it's a little bit simpler. And we'll go back to the bench and I'll explain that to you in a, just a moment. But I figured since we have her cracked open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the spindle here just so you can kind of see it in action. Um, I'll have to take it out of e-stop, so I'll click over to the next panel. But I just kind of want to give you a feel for what is actually going on underneath it because most people, first of all, it's not recommended that you run it with the spindle door open. Um, I'm doing this just for an example because you can get things stuck in there and you don't want to lose any fingers or, you know, squish anything. Um, but I just want to show you how it all kind of works together. So what I'll do is I'm going to take the machine out of e-stop, keep my fingers way out of the way, and I'm going to power up the spindle so you can kind of see what this all looks like as it's working together. All right, we're just about ready to rev up old Oli here. One thing I also want you to take note of is once I hit cycle start on that spindle, you're probably going to hear an awful lot of noise. Oli is due for a new spindle. I have one in house and I'm hoping to flip one out in the near future. And I'll grab that on video for you all too to see. Um, but he's got about nine years on his spindle and I use him on a semi-regular basis. So he's way overdue. And I think it's a good opportunity for you to kind of hear when a spindle starts riding a little rough, when it's a little worse for the wear, maybe when it's a good time to flop it out. So I'm going to go ahead, rev them up. I'm going to put them to 8,000 RPMs. going to rev them up real quick, give you a chance to kind of put your peepers on what it looks like when the spindle is spinning. And then I'm going to rev it back down so you can see it kind of coast to a stop. So without further ado, let's kick him on. Back at the bench so I can show you this real quick once. This here is the replacement spindle that's eventually going to go into Oli. I figure it's a really good opportunity to kind of let you get your eyes on what the replacement spindle looks like. It's all one unit. You'll notice that there's pulleys here. You'll also notice on the face that there's six clearance holes with counter bores on them. So you're replacing the whole unit. It's a like drop-in unit basically. So when we go to replace the spindle on Oli, it's just a matter of dropping the head down, blocking it up real good, cracking loose those six socket head cap screws, removing them, dropping the old spindle out, putting the new spindle in, tightening up those bolts, and reconnecting everything. It's a lot easier than it actually sounds. So I'm hoping uh, in the near future we'll be able to kind of do that together. Um, the other nice thing about having this replacement spindle is it's going to allow me to bring you guys in for a little closer look on how a regular manual drawbar works. So let's take a peek so you can kind of visualize what's going on when you're tightening your tool up into the spindle. What we're looking at right now is a view of the spindle from the spindle nose. A few things I'd like to point out that you probably already noticed. If you look through it, you can see daylight. That's by design. So our draw bar is going to be going in through the other end, through the spindle casting, and thread into that R8 collet. You'll probably also notice there's kind of a gray surface here. That is the ground area that's grounded a taper, and that taper mates with the taper that we will see on the R8 collet. One last little thing, and I know it's a little hard to see, but there's a little sticky outy part. That's an alignment pin. So when we put an R8 collet up in there, there's actually some slots that are machined into the collet. And it doesn't really matter which one, but um, you just want to make sure that that pin is lined up with one of the slots. And it'll just cozy right up in there, and then you'll be able to secure it with the drawbar. Now for the fun part. Now we're going to talk about how it all comes together. First things first, let's talk about the drawbar. This is a drawbar. 
nothing too complicated or scary about it. It's got some flat heads here for a drawbar wrench, and it's got some threads on this side. The threads um, down below here are what actually holds the collet into place, and it's hard to see, but this R8 collet does have mating internal threads that thread um, the drawbar threads into. And how you set it up is the drawbar goes in from the top, and if you recall, in the last shot, we talked about that taper that's ground into the spindle nose here. So that taper mates with the taper here on the R8 collet and gives it a little bit of a taper lock. So it's not going to be quite the same as putting it in the machine because in the machine, we actually have some top hat spacers and things. But we're going to go ahead and drop that in and we're just going to thread it in a little bit. Up at the top, um, when it is in the machine, you'll notice there's some spacers and everything, so it does get a chance to get nice and snug here. Other thing I wanted to point out, because my machine doesn't have it, um, most machines, when you're doing a manual drawbar, have some kind of lock mechanism. So when you are tightening the drawbar, the whole thing doesn't spin. In my machine's case, uh, when it came OEM, it has this head here that if you look, there's some flats ground onto it. That is for a swing arm that would be um, just inside the door that would come and lock into place so that when you are putting the drawbar in and tightening it down, you're not turning the whole spindle because otherwise when you go to tighten this down, if you don't have a way to hold the spindle bearings, the whole thing's going to turn on you and you're not going to get anywhere. So again, it's slightly different than when it's in the machine because we don't have the spacers. We can't get a real good snug on it, but I wanted to show you this. Now you're probably wondering, that's great, but how does the tool fit in here? So we're just going to loosen this up just a little. And I want to show you this bore inside the um, R8 collet is three quarter inch. The tooling that I use in Oli is the Tormach TTS tooling system. It's just a straight chink system. This is a three quarter inch ground boss on the back or stem on the back. And all it does is scooch up into the spindle. And when you pull this tight, it actually sits up against the spindle nose. And it's great for tooling repeatability, not always great for pull out if you're doing any gummy or real ductile material um, because you don't have that positive taper lock that you would in say a BT30 or a Cat40 or something along that line. And there's also no pull stud at the top. So there are a couple, you know, knocks against it here, but all in all, not a bad little system. And if you're just doing some prototype work, um, it's not so bad. It still works. You just got to be real mindful about how aggressive you're cutting with this. That's straw bars in a nutshell. But if you're anything like me, I love, love, love taking stuff apart and figuring out how it works. And I love being able to see how things work. And even though this is much older and I'm missing half the components, I wanted to show you, this is from a larger mill. Um, it's the inside of a spindle. It's what you would see inside the casing. So if you take that casing off, you'll notice there's some grooves in here um, at the top. And this is your spindle nose right here. But if you take a look at these grooves here, both those grooves, and I broke the other one off, but both those grooves have a set of bearings that sit over the top of it. And inside these little holes in the bearings is where your ball bearings sit. Now, unfortunately, I ain't got no balls, but you can kind of get an idea of how this would sit together. The ball bearings would sit inside this race and that's what makes the spindle spin inside there. So they're nice and smooth. They're perfectly cylindrical. The problem is after a while, they can start to get heated up. They can start getting kind of gravelly. You get stuff up into your spindle and that's generally when it's time to get a new spindle or do a spindle bearing replacement. But I wanted to just kind of give you a bird's eye view of this and maybe in some future videos, if you're interested, 
feel free to let me know in the comment section if this is something you'd even like to see, but I might be able to bribe one of my buddies to let me borrow an Arbor Press and maybe we can take uh, Oli's old spindle and take it apart together just so you can kind of see what's inside. Uh, feel free to drop a comment in there if that's something you're interested in. If there's anything else that you would like to see, drop me a line. I'd love to see if I can't help make that make sense to you. Um, other than that, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again next time. Oh, and before I forget, I found out which button you're supposed to smash and you're supposed to smash the like button. So if you'd like to see some more of me, I would love it if you could just do me a favor and you don't even have to smash it. You can just take your mouse and the little pointy thing and just click like, and I'd be very much appreciative. Thanks, and we'll see you next time on Wrench Wench Works. Bye. Hey, welcome back to Wrench Wench Works. I'm Jenny, and today I'm stoked to be talking about draw bars. Oh my God, where did that come from? Like. Oh my God, draw bars. I totally love draw bars. Like, who does it? Oh my God, Becky. Look at her spindle. It is so big.